Hey, this is Aleš Nosek, the software practitioner coming to you from Red Hat. Today we are going to troubleshoot a Vertex web application. And uh, I uploaded the source code for the application onto GitHub. You can download it from the following URL. After you clone the source code, uh, you can build the application with Maven clean package. Let me now explain what the application actually does. Um, the, uh, and uh, for that, I, I have the clips here with where I imported the source code. The application is a simple web service based on the Vertex. As you can see here, we are instantiating the Vertex instance and then deploying on a single vertical our web service. And uh, what it does is when, when the client sends a GET request to our web service, uh, our web service will go and fetch the content of this hard-coded URL, and then it will pass it back to the client. Now, in my test environment, I'm using a separate Apache server, which is actually serving this, uh, this URL. So let's go back to the console, and uh, the application build is finished. So we can start the application with Java jar target and the name of the fed jar here. The application started up. It's uh, listening on port 8080. Uh, I'll open another console window and uh, let's send it a test request using curl. Um, what comes back is uh, the content of that hard-coded URL, which is uh, this simple hello world message. Let's now focus on the performance of the application because we are having a suspicion that the application is not performing as expected. And uh, when troubleshooting performance issues, uh, the good first step is to bring the application under load to see how it behaves. And for that, I'm having JMeter here, which is configured with a test plan uh, JMeter is a tool which uh, generates, which can generate a lot of load uh, on the application, and for that I'm I am configuring it with uh, ten worker worker threads here, which are uh, in a loop sending requests to the application. And uh, let's start the the load. And in the summary report, uh, we can follow uh, on uh, how how the throughput or how many requests per second the application is serving at the moment. You, you can see that we are roughly getting some uh, 15, 1600 uh, requests per second through the application. Now let's let it run for a couple of minutes uh, to achieve the steady state. And uh, for that, I, I'll pause the video here. Coming back to our application, it's been running for uh, 22 minutes now and uh, the throughput we are achieving is a steady throughput of 1614 requests per second. Uh, it's not really much if you consider that this application doesn't really include or contain any business logic and uh, it's just a straight HTTP request and response. I try to fiddle with uh, JMeter like I edit more user threads hoping for a better throughput, but uh, it, uh, it I was not really successful to get a better performance. So something is wrong with something is wrong with the application. And for that, uh, to troubleshoot the performance, I like to use the, uh, the visual VM tool here. Uh, you can actually attach this tool to, a, to your JVM to get a more insight about how your application is doing. Uh, here in this uh, monitor tab, uh, we can see the overall CPU usage of this JVM, which is uh, only you know five percent of CPU. Uh, that's really a very low CPU utilization. Now, uh, to to get a better understanding, uh, you know how the application or what the application is doing, we will we will want to profile it, and for that uh, we switch to this sampler tab here. So here we have the sampling profiler that is built into Visual VM. And uh, the sampling profiler uh, periodically with the period of uh, 20 milliseconds, t 
takes a snapshot of all uh, stacks of all the threads running on the JVM and uh, based on that it will construct a call graph which uh, will provide us with the information of uh, how much time the threads are spending executing each of the methods uh, in our code. So uh, I'm going to start, start the sampling process and uh, while the sampler is still collecting information we can already start investigating it and uh, you can see so this view is the call graph uh, generated uh, you can see that we have two threads here running for us the event loop thread is the most important one because that's the thread which is actually executing our handlers which we defined in our application and the call graph starts we will be traversing it from the top uh, where you can see that the topmost method is actually the thread run method. And then come going down, uh, you can see that this uh, thread run method, uh, we so far spent 52 seconds running it. And uh, this uh, method is calling another method, fast thread local runnable. Uh, and most of the time is actually spent in this call. We can see that the time spent in the thread run method itself, the so-called self time, is pretty much zero. Uh, that means that this method is pretty much calling this method and, and that call is there on the stack uh, all the time. So now we'll go down here. Uh, again, we are looking at the numbers here, the total time spent in the call. And we are walking the tree uh, following the highest total time here. So I will do go down, go down. You can see that the event loop uh, call graph starts, of course, with the Netty implementation because that's the underlying framework. And then uh, we go through the call, call tree more and more deeper here. And uh, again, following the highest number here, here this method here, this, this read method is making a call to fire channel read and file channel read complete but you can see that most of the time is actually spent in this fire channel read 111 seconds so far so we'll follow that way now this looks like a see that the call tree goes pretty deep uh, this looks like a re recursion right uh, in the code and then we go all the way down Again, following the highest number, channel read, highest number, go down, uh, all the way down. So, and finally, we are actually getting uh, to the invocation of our code, this request handler one, that's already the code uh, in our application. And you can see, indeed, that we are spending a lot of time there, 150 seconds. Overall time so far is 180 seconds that this thread was running. And so out of that, 150 was actually spent in our handle method here in the request handler one. So most of the time. And then what we see here is actually, hey, you know, we are making this call here to Jersey client get method, right? And that's, that's the method which is actually fetching that data from that hard-coded URL I showed you previously. And uh, it's interesting that we are using Jersey uh, client implementation here because as we go down through the internals of uh, that, we will follow, uh, follow all the way down. Again, this call here is the most of the time spent there. Right on the right, you can see that. Go invoke, go apply execute execute oh it's it's rather a deep call hierarchy here and uh, have to follow it until we come to this call one and that's that one is very interesting <laughs> because this call is actually a blocking call right or a call to a blocking api in java to read data out of the socket so 
you are saying that our event loop is actually executing a Jersey web client to fetch that data from the URL. And that web client inside is actually leveraging this uh, Java net uh, socket input stream class and its read method uh, to read data out of the, the socket. And this is a blocking call, which is really, um, which should not really be, uh, you know, executed on the event loop because this call will cause the event loop to go to sleep instead of uh, staying and working on the CPU. Now, interestingly, uh, in Visual VM here, you can see this column that's total time, like this would kind of um, allude to it that this is a total time spent on the CPU, but that's rather uh, confusing to me because indeed this time is not spent on the CPU because that call is actually blocking and uh, the, 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 the event loop thread at this point is not really leveraging any CPU, unfortunately. So uh, this total time is not a time spent really executing on the CPU, but you can more read it as a time while from the standpoint of the JVM, the thread was actually runnable. It means it was not like uh, taking a log uh, or, or sleeping from the standpoint of the of the JVM. However, uh, the underlying operating system will indeed put that threat into uh, into sleeping, even when the JVM thinks about it or looks at it as that the threat is still running or runnable. So now we have the culprit here. That uh, you know the culprit here is the is the is using the um, Jersey web client on the event loop, which is actually a blocking web client. So that should definitely not be used there. And uh, that would be probably a big reason why our application is not performing as expected. And uh, with that, uh, in the next section, uh, we, will, we are going back to the code again, and we are going to fix this issue. Coming back to Eclipse in the source code of our application, you can see this uh, use vertex client property defined here. And uh, this property allows us to easily swap out the blocking Jersey web client and instead use a non-blocking vertex web client. And that's exactly what we are going to do now. Uh, we are going to stop the running application and uh, restart it with uh, use vertex client and uh, remember to add the equal sign at the end of the property definition and uh, from the output you can see that uh, we are using the request handler 2 now which means we are using the non-blocking vertex web client now and next thing we will need to restart the workload uh, clean it up here and restart it and uh, the throughput is uh, growing and I'm going to pause the video now until we have achieved a static throughput. After running our application for more than 34 minutes, we are achieving a steady throughput of uh, 10,680 requests per second. If you remember from before, we were seeing throughput of about 15, 1600 requests per second. Um, this is a, a substantial performance improvement, almost a order of magnitude. And uh, to take a look how our application is doing using Visual VM, uh, in the monitor tab, we can see that uh, the JVM, which is running our application, is uh, leveraging about 13% of the available CPU capacity. Um, this is, again, an improvement uh, in comparison from before, because before we are seeing number like five to six percent. However, the question is, why are we not seeing a number which is approaching 100% of the CPU capacity? And uh, in order to explain that, uh, I would like to tell you something more about the design of the application, which I didn't show you before. And uh, our HTTP server, which is the web service we are deploying, we are deploying it using actually a single vertex vertical. And uh, if we review the CPU configuration of this laptop where we are running the application on, we can, we can see that there is a single CPU uh, with four cores available, and each core 
is having uh, two hyperthreads on it, which means that two times four is eight. We are having eight logical CPUs available for the operating system to schedule tasks on. Now, because we are uh, deploying our vertical or our web server using a single vertical, that single vertical is associate, associated to a single event loop thread in Vertex. And uh, even when our vertical would be running 100% of the time, because it's still associated or running on a single thread, uh, it would be able to actually leverage only the one hyper thread uh, out of eight. And that would mean that even by running on the CPU all the time, we would see roughly one eighth of the CPU capacity used, which would be around 12.5%. So our number 13 is roughly in, in that ballpark. And uh, the reason why we are actually seeing more is because our application consists of more than that one thread. We are also having here, I can show you uh, a acceptor thread besides the event loop one, which is also pretty busy accepting the TCP connections. You need to also consider that this uh, uh, that the CPU time on this laptop is actually shared between our application and the JMeter, which is generating the load at the same time. So 13% would be the ballpark. And uh, if you would like to achieve more, better CPU utilization, you would need to deploy uh, uh, multiple HTTP server verticals. In this video, we measured a performance of a Vertex web application and found out that the application was not performing as expected. In order to troubleshoot the issue, we attached the Visual VM to, a, to the running application and uh, investigated where the application was spending most of its execution time. We realized that uh, the application was using Jersey blocking web client on the event loop, which uh, was the root cause of the performance issue. After replacing the blocking Jersey web client with a non-blocking Vertex web client, the performance of the application improved by almost an order of magnitude. This concludes this video. I thank you for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed it.